I'm Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Francesco Campoy Flores. He is with the Go team at Google. Thank you for joining me. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Can you give me a quick overview of the goals of the Go programming language? Sure. So, uh, the Go programming language was created to f uh, fit and solve a very specific problem, which is uh, there's some static languages, uh, so a very, very uh, statically typed and compiled languages that are very heavy to write. And there's some other languages that are very dynamic and they're very fun to write. Uh, the problem is that they're not too fast. So actually you had to make this choice mm -hmm. between either performance or uh, readability of the code or uh, easy, is, uh, easy to write. Mm -hmm. And what we were trying is to have something that is static, compiled, fast, but that has also more modern ideas such as interfaces or concurrency. Sure. It's garbage collected. So you have this pretty sweet spot between uh, dynamic, fun language and something that you can actually run on production. Uh, yeah, I've heard the concurrency part is really great. Yes, the concurrency part, it's actually borrowed from other languages. It's very similar to the, to the concurrency patterns that you can find in Erlang and other languages even all, older than this mm -hmm. and and it's something that we didn't invent but it's it's a very simple mechanism and the way you end up writing code when you think about concurrency as something that is available and easily available and cheap it actually changes a lot so you end up writing code that it's separating your problems into di different ways so instead of thinking about a big thing with a lot of type hierarchy mm -hmm. To start thinking about the little processes and how to comp how to do a composition of them. Right. Yeah. So, how has being open source really affected the way Go has you know evolved? Yeah. So, uh, Go started as a as a internal project at Google, and it kept being uh, internal for some years. And I think it was three years ago, it became an open source project. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, all of a sudden, there was a lot of people that started to be interested about the about the language and eventually started joining the community and becoming contributors and right now we have uh, I think that we have around 300 contributors to the language and we have um, around maybe 30 people working for Google, uh, for Google so mm -hmm. yeah like one only 10% of the community is Google right yeah so how would you when would it be a good idea for a developer to start using go? So I could say that the best point to start uh, programming in Go is actually at any any problem any problem that you want to solve. So if it's something that you actually need to solve, uh, try and do it in Go instead of other languages. My first uh, my first program in Go it was actually replacing something that otherwise I could have written in Python, mm -hmm. and and I learned a lot. And I think it's very easy to st to get it started. And it's by using it and using it that you actually get the whole uh, potential of concepts like uh, it, the fact that interfaces are satisfied implicitly. The fact that I can say that, it doesn't mean that someone and developers going to understand all the power f that is behind that concept. So, yeah, I could say that pretty much everything. Uh, most of the companies, what they do is actually they replace some part of their systems that they have they have had problems with sure. like, uh, something that has been in another uh, some scripted language and they decide that it's not performing anymore mm -hmm. and then they they just change it and rewrite it in Go and that's how Go gets in the company and afterwards everybody everybody's pretty right. happy with it so it starts just evolving sure so would you suggest that um when turning to Go, that developers have experience maybe in Java or C or something like that before they get so to? So having experience in C or Java, it's definitely a win because uh, the syntax is not very far away from those okay. languages. Uh, it will help. So if you are from Java, the fact that there's uh, also garbage collected, uh, it's a garbage collecting language, mm -hmm. could also help in the fact that you understand how that works. But uh, the concurrency part is very different. Okay. So that's where people get a little bit uh, surprised, mm -hmm. and I think that's why Go is kind of exciting because you have new concepts that people are probably not used to, depending on the language that they have been using sure. for. Sure. So yeah, a little bit familiar, but some new stuff too. Okay, so just to get technical for a second, yes. can you give me some sort of best practices that you guys have figured out over time? Yeah, so actually 
in uh, the Go community, we have figured out something that it's not a secret, which is we spend way more time reading code than writing it. So the most important part, the most important thing of any Go program is the fact that it's very readable. It's very clear what it's doing. It's very well documented mm -hmm. and with very clear APIs. Mm -hmm. So I could say that this is pretty much the most important things. Also, other best practices are like any other language, avoid repeating yourself, don't write the same. Uh, sure. But in Go, uh, we allow repeating yourself a little bit when it makes it more readable. So okay. it's something you have a lot of different best practices that you have to decide what to apply at one moment. So, yeah. Interesting. And actually, if, uh, the, I, yesterday I gave a talk about, about it. So the slides are online. So if you look for, if you Google for uh, 12 Go best practices, there's okay. a little bit more about that. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you. I look forward to seeing Go's future. Great, thank you very much.